It's 2065, and you're standing on the moon's dusty surface, working away on the latest array of solar panels to help fuel the local town's energy grid. Suddenly, the surface begins to shake. Is this a moonquake? Or are those moon-born teenagers having a party in the town hall again? You look up at Earth. You're so used to it, you barely even notice it anymore. But now, it looks different. It takes you a few moments to work out why. It appears to be shrinking. You begin to panic. The Earth is moving away. The ground rumbles again, and you work out what's happening. The Earth isn't moving, but what you're standing on is. The moon has broken off its orbit and it's heading out into deep space. Destination unknown. The strange thing is, it's happening right now and has been for a very long time. It's even affecting how long our days are. Eventually, it will pull away altogether and dramatically affect our planet's oceans. To explore what will happen, let's go back a little to put it all into perspective. The moon has been hanging around us, literally, for 4.51 billion years. There are a few theories as to how the moon came into being. The main one is that it formed when a large object smashed into the young Earth. The early solar system was a chaotic place. A number of stellar bodies were created that didn't make it into a full planet. One of these bodies, as large as Mars, smashed into Earth, throwing huge chunks of our planet's crust into space. Gravity took over and tied these separate elements together. This explains why the Moon is made of lighter particles than we find here on Earth. Billions of years later, and we're more than used to having the Moon with us, it affects so much of our everyday life. The obvious one is tidal motion. The gravitational pull or tidal force that the Moon exerts on our planet creates the tides. This force causes all of the water on the Earth's surface that's closest to the Moon to bulge out to one side. A very short explanation is that it pushes in from the top of our planet and also the bottom, while pushing out from the sides at the same time. The Earth also has an effect on the Moon, which we'll get into in a minute. But it appears that the Moon might not like our company as much as we might think. It's slowly drifting away from us, even as we speak. The Moon can seem small or large depending on the lunar cycle, but in actuality, it's just over a quarter or 27% of the size of Earth. The diameter of the Moon's orbit around us is nearly 477,213 miles, but this diameter is increasing by 1.5 inches every year. Which, of course, means that it's moving away by a factor of 1.5 inches each year. To help explain why we have to analyze our relationship to the Moon a bit more closely, both celestial bodies are tidally locked. We are synced up in such a way that we always see the same side of the Moon. The hemisphere that we never see is often referred to as the dark side, but that's not quite right. As the Moon orbits Earth, different parts are in sunlight or darkness at varying times. This change in illumination is the Moon going through its various phases. The tidal forces not only affect our oceans, but the body of the Earth too. Because the Earth is more rigid in structure than water, the tides on more solid matter, like the Earth's crust, have a much smaller effect. The tidal forces are interdependent. The gravitational field of the Earth will also apply tides in the body of the Moon. Again, because we're not talking about fluid, the effect is very small, but it's there. This interchange of tides is quite complex. Interiors of both bodies are heated by these tides, just as the force applied to any object can create friction or its own heat. Take the planet Jupiter, for example, and its moon, Io. The tidal forces of the giant planet are so huge that the surface of Io, which is solid, is raised and lowered several hundred feet in each rotational period. The heat generated means that the interior of Io is most likely molten. As a result, the surface of Io is covered with active volcanoes. 
It's one of the most geologically chaotic places in our solar system. Despite its heat, it's definitely not the place to take the family for a summer holiday. Back to Earth, our planet rotates on its axis once every 24 hours, and the Moon performs one revolution around us in 27.3 days. The bulge on Earth actually speeds up the Moon. The Earth pulls the Moon ahead in its orbit. In other words, the Earth's bulge increases the radius of the Moon's orbit around us. While this is happening, the Moon pulls back on the tidal bulge of the Earth, slowing its rotational speed, though just a fraction. A very small fraction. This means that 100 years from now, a day on Earth will be 2 milliseconds longer than it is right now. Blink and you'll miss it. Literally. In addition, since the Earth is larger, the gravitational pull is stronger, causing the Moon to speed up slowly. As time passes, its orbit will become bigger and bigger. This takes us back to that measurement of 1.5 inches. It may not seem like a lot, but over a period of time, this measurement becomes significant. Let's jump forwards billions of years from now, where we see that the Moon's orbit is so big that it does leave the pleasure of our company permanently. What happens to our oceans then? You've already guessed it the tides will cease to be. That will make for very calm seas for any boat trips. That's if there are any humans left in, oh, 50 billion years. Before that time, because of the tidal locking slowing down the Earth's rotational speed, it's possible that the Earth will slow down enough to permanently face the Moon. In turn, it may prevent the Moon from moving away from us. Imagine the effect on our planet if we stop rotating. One half will always be in darkness, the other in light. That'll play havoc on our seasons and the natural life. While it sounds dramatic, and the loss of tides would be a significant phenomenon, there are other more serious things to worry about occurring before then. In a tenth of that time, five billion years, our sun will likely consume both the moon and the earth. Yep, our sun is going to have a galaxy-sized party the likes of which our solar system has never seen. And everyone's invited. The sun is continually burning the hydrogen in its core into helium. Right now, it's approximately halfway through its life cycle. Towards the end, it will run out of hydrogen in its core. The sun will ultimately become a red giant. Its surface is predicted to reach Mars. That's when gravitational forces will take over. The Earth will be dragged into this new Sun and disintegrate. The Sun gets 10% brighter every billion years. So long before the planet is totally destroyed, the heat will have melted any ice and fried almost everything living. All of our oceans will have dried up too. So, while the planet has a 5 billion year life cycle yet, everything living on it may only have a billion. To recap, the Moon may move from the Earth but the Sun will have wiped out both long before the tides are halted. Let's steer away from that hot object and return to that sibling-like relationship of the Moon and Earth. The fact that the Moon has the same rotational period as the orbital period of both the Earth and the Moon is no coincidence. Over billions of years, the tidal coupling of the two has led to the synchronization we know today, and yet it's still evolving. The Earth is slowing its rotational period. Eventually, it will match that of the Moon, and they will be exact. And as I mentioned before, the days on Earth will become longer as well, by 2 milliseconds every century. To have a significant impact, it will take many thousands of years. However, it's nice to think that both the Earth and the Moon affect each other in many powerful and beneficial ways. It's almost like they're simply hanging out together, like a couple of old intergalactic buddies.